Pom Pom Oricorio is an absolute monster that does not get enough love. It's got some okay stats with base 98 special attack and 93 speed, but it does have some extra tricks under those pom poms. Its exclusive ability Dancer allows it to immediately copy any Pokemon's dance move while also being able to set up Quiver Dance on its own. After the boost, this thing can fire off hard-hitting stab electric-type revelation dances along with Air Slash. It can roost for a bit of longevity, but the true sauce comes from the Terra Ground for coverage. So Revelation Dance's type varies based on the user's primary type. This means that since we're now ground type, Revelation Dance actually becomes a stronger built-in Terra Blast. Oricario is a very interesting kind of gimmick Pokemon that can actually be pretty useful. Listen, if you woke up this morning thinking to yourself, damn, the only thing missing from my life is a little yellow bird dancing with some pom-poms and destroying stuff, boy, do I have a surprise for you. I almost didn't do it. I thought to myself, should I bring this power into the world and make people respect the little bird? But here we are. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. Now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Lil Jelly. I, I honestly hate seeing Ditto on team previews, mostly just because this thing wants to beat you so bad, and a lot of the time, it's able to stop sweeps, and it's just annoying. It does turn into Registeel, because who does not want to be a nice shiny doorknob, and they actually end up just going for the Earthquake turn one. Kind of imagine they want to just match my Stealth Rock there, and I actually just decide to go for the Thunder Wave. Now, the reason for that is for a little bit of insurance later. So. The way Ditto works is a lot of the time it's going to be running Choice Scarf, and if it switches into a Pokemon that has stat boosts, it's able to grab those stat boosts, be faster with the Choice Scarf, and just kind of shut down sweeps. So, knowing that that's going to be something that potentially stops the Oricorio later, getting the Thunder Wave on it is going to make my life just a whole lot easier. So, I imagine they probably want to switch out here, they know they're not able to do a whole bunch of damage, so I'm just going to go ahead and, with my metal sausage fingers, lay down some little stealth rock here. As they actually make the risky maneuver, they're going to go into the Salazzle. Thing comes in, stanched the hell up, and they, I could have gone for the Earthquake there, as it would have been super effective on the Registeel, but also uh, Salazzle four times a week and absolutely allergic to the damn ground. So, at this point, obviously, I don't really want to take a Fire Blast, a Flamethrower. I am specially defensive Registeel, but I do have the crazy Seahorse Dragon in the back that is also Assault Vest and can handle both of this thing's stabs and then honestly scare a lot of their team with a Draco Meteor with that adaptability. So as I bring this thing in, they are able to go for the Toxic. If you're wondering why the hell a Poison type just got Toxic, that is because Salazzle has the Corrosion ability, allows it to poison anything regardless of type. So it actually would have been able to poison the Registeel as well. Uh, but uh, Sea Dragon does not really care that much, and now it's time to just go ahead and drop some Dracos on some bitches because that is going to, again, it's going to do a lot of damage. With that adaptability, people kind of sleep on what Dragauzi is able to do. So, they actually end up switching into the Glamora. It is going to take that Stealth Rock chip that is important because if it's Focus Sash, it is now broken. And the Draco Meteor does actually just take care of it, which is pretty solid. Was kind of worried about the potential for toxic spikes, but again, I do have the drag algae to just switch back into those and soak them up. But I'm just over here poisoned with some minus special attack and mostly just chilling, just floating in the air, as they now have a little bit of uh, momentum at least being able to bring in whatever they like. And in comes the friggin' snatched gremlin over here. So at minus special attack, obviously I do have the support with the sludge wave, but then I'm like, I am just gonna switch out of here. It's not gonna be able to do too much. I kind of imagine this thing is just gonna be light clay setting up dual screens, but most of the time you never really know what these things are going to do. It actually ends up going right for the spirit break, which would have just been neutral, does have the chance to drop special attack, and I just decided to bring back in the doorknob. This thing is out here just glistening. Someone polished the hell out of Registeel, and I'm kind of here for it. So, I obviously have the coverage with the heavy slam, of course they know that, but also they, they've seen the Registeel set with their ditto. So I decide, since they switched into Salazzle the first time, potentially they want to bring that thing in again. And I'm just going to go for the Earthquake, but this thing actually ends up going for the Trick and gives me a lagging tail. So I don't know how the hell slow this guy wants my Ball of Steel to be, but an Earthquake isn't going to do much to the Grim Snarl. Regardless, it also is going to be Leftover. So it's kind of good to know at this point, we've seen what this thing's working with, 
and uh, I don't have to really be that afraid of it. At least, sometimes people working with like a prankster bulk up set and just surprise you with an offense, and very scary. However, I decide I'm actually just gonna switch right into the Oricorio here, as they actually end up going for the taunt. I kind of expected maybe they want to switch out here, and then Oricorio could get himself a nice little position, but we're over here, we have had our morning coffee, we're bouncing around like crazy, and the unfortunate news is that we came in and got taunted, which is kind of a bummer, but I just decided to go for a revelation dance because I want to get some chip off on this thing. I can actually last long enough to wear off the taunt, and then honestly I'm feeling like I have a pretty decent position uh, to start getting some uh, some little cheerleader dances going. So, they're actually going to end up bringing in the big old pile of salt, I am going to shake it like a salt shaker, and a revelation dance actually kind of does a decent amount of chip here, probably shows it's more of a physically defensive set. And this is actually an interesting matchup. So here's the thing, I know they did not set up the Stealth Rock earlier, so I'm kind of expecting them to go for the Stealth Rock here. Buddy's rocking the cowboy hat, and I'm just gonna Revelation Dance again. I know that next turn, I'm gonna be able to wear off the Taunt, and then it's gonna be game time. However, they actually just end up going for the Salt here, and that's gonna do around half to me, because obviously I am Flying type, and Salt equals Rock, and for whatever damn reason, Oricorio does not uh, enjoy. So. Salt here might just be most the most annoying move of all time. Every turn until I die now, I'm just going to be taking a little bit of chip. And also, since I'm freaking flying type, that is not good for me. Except, the main reason why we're not afraid of the Garg is because I do have a plan. I can actually bust out the Terra Ground, and that's going to help me a whole lot here. So, as the taunt is going to wear off, they actually decide to switch into Ditto. And this is the exact situation why I really wanted to get that Thunder Wave on the ditto early because they come in, they turn into me, and I'm going to bust out the Terra here. We're going to go for that Terra ground, and Terra on the Oricorio is super interesting. While you, of course, do lose uh, the ability to have an electric type revelation dance, now we're just a full on ground type yellow bird with the fucking earth on our heads, and it's just, it, it's a wild situation over here because as I go for the roost, I am going to get enough health back to where, of course, I'm not super worried about now the chip coming from the salt cure. And uh, we have a weird matchup here with the Ditto, because obviously, staring at myself in the face, we know that this thing has the Dancer ability just like us. So, as I can go for a Quiver Dance, they're actually also going to get the boost, but I'm like, you know what? That's, that's fine. So, as I go for the Quiver Dance here, this is actually one of the most interesting turns I've seen in a while, because, considering I go for the Dancing move in front of the Oricorio, it actually gets the Dancer ability, but then gets fully paralyzed, so it does not get the Quiver Dance. And then immediately on the same turn also gets paralyzed on whatever move they were clicking. So that's actually kind of crazy. I didn't even really think that that was a possibility, but he got the two paras in a row and also on the dancer turn. And so now we're in a way better position. Now the bad news is I obviously cannot revelation dance because this thing is flying type and now my rev dance is ground. So I just decided to go for the air slash and with that special attack boost, I thought it might be close to a two hit KO, um, but it's just going to be a little bit off there. So. Um, I'm just going to continue to click air slashes here. If I can get rid of this ditto, honestly, the bird is in a really good spot. So, the air slash is going to do a bunch of damage to me, and the salt here brings me down really close to going down there. I go to 10 HP, and then I'm like, well, that is the exact situation why we have the roost. I'm just going to take a little step on the ground real quick, going to bring me down to half. And this is a spot where, seeing how much damage their air slash did, paired with that salt here, I know that I can take them as long as uh, there's no crits or any crazy shit going on. I do get knocked back down to 19 HP, but the plan is now to just continue to go for roosts until they either get fully paralyzed, miss an air slash, and then they just straight up miss the air slash, which is actually amazing. So, now we're fully in the spot we need to be. I'm above half health, and all I have to do is just connect on an air slash here to finish off the Oricorio, and then I kind of have coverage on a lot of their squad. Obviously, barring, you know, Terra's in the back, but this has been quite the interesting little mirror match with this ditto. So the air slash is going to connect, takes care of myself, and we are over here in a really good spot for momentum. So now it feels like a lot of my stressful work is done, but there is still a lot that can go wrong here. So I am chilling at a decent amount of health here, and as they decide to go into the Grim Snarl, obviously this thing with Prankster can go for any non-attacking move before me, and I kind of get to see what their answer is going to be to a well-played freaking Oricorio. Even just with one Quiver Dance, this thing can be 
an absolute problem. So they go for the taunt here. That's just going to stop me from setting up any further. And I kind of expect that. So rather than quiver dancing again, I'm just going to go for revelation dance. I feel like I have enough damage at this point uh, to be pretty much fine. And it actually does not quite take care of the Grim Snarl. This thing's got to be pretty specially defensive. And after a little bite of an apple, it is going to be at least obviously in range for another one to kill. However, the Salt Cure is starting to stack up. And once again, most annoying damn move of all freaking time. So I'm going to go for another Revelation Dance here. I don't want to miss Air Slashes, but as they switch into the Dingle Bush, I kind of I probably should have clicked the Air Slash because they bring this in for the main reason being that they know that obviously they resist the Revelation Dance and then they're just trying to stall out and let the, uh, the Salt Cure kind of do its thing. So Dingle Bush takes the Revelation Dance, no problem. It is kind of a fun dynamic because of course then I do have the coverage with the Air Slash. The problem becomes I'm just starting to get real close to going down to to the salt cure and obviously I cannot roost because I am taunted so I'm just gonna now go for the air slash kind of just my safest bet at this point except they know that's kind of gonna happen they're gonna end up switching back into the grim snarl who unfortunately does not go down to the stealth rock but then I just don't miss the air slash so we got our freaking glasses on with the Oricario today 2020 vision coming in clutch and as that does take care of the grim snarl guess what we actually can live the salt cure with 5 HP which is clutch as hell. Not only that, but also the taunt wears off. So next turn, I can actually decide to go for a roost and see if we can get the, uh, the freaking bird just continuing to wreak havoc. So they decide to go into Salazzle, and this is actually kind of a good opportunity for me to go for the roost. I'm going to go for it regardless, just because I have the special defense boost with that Quiver Dance, and they don't have much that they can really go for. It turns out they're actually going to click the Toxic. And this thing is just out here spread and toxic like no other and fun fact of the day did you guys know that if you're a poison type using toxic there's zero chance for it to miss this has been your fun fact of the day now you must hit the like button so paired with the salt cure toxic is going to be a bit annoying because obviously i'm just going to start to eventually get whittled down it's going to stop me from roosting back up and it is not great for me so of course staring at the salazzle i kind of am forced to go for the revelation dance but I kind of see their plan here. They're going to switch back into the bush, and I predict that. I'm going to go for the Air Slash, kind of knowing that since they went for the Toxic, their plan is just to stall out uh, the Ori Kurio sweep. And if I had gone for the Rev Dance there, obviously Dingle Bush comes in and takes it, and then I just take another turn. Uh, but luckily, we make the pr correct prediction, and the Air Slash is going to finish off the Arbolivo. So, we are a bit on more of a timer than we have been at this point. But honestly, the bird is out here just tearing up the team. At this point, the damage has kind of been done, and we're just going to see what we can do before we go down. As they go into the tombstone, I'm just going to click the revelation dance. There's nothing really they can switch into here. And they do actually have the Terra. I'm thinking clearly it's not going to be a flying Terra, or else they probably would have done it earlier. It does turn out to be the ghost Terra there for the fighting moves. But guess what? Ori Carrillo does not give a shit. I can just revelation dance. And with the special attack we have, that is just easily going to be able to take care of it anyway, because we've got some good chip on the little fellas. This thing's been over here just spreading the salt around like the most toxic mon in the damn game. And it's good to see it go down before it was able to just be too annoying. So bad news is we do go down to the toxic here. But good news is they only have one mon left and the damage has been done. And consider yourself Oricorioed, I guess. It, it, getting the paralyze on the ditto. Oh, it's pretty important for that uh, for that to be set up. But knowing that their final mon is going to be the Salazzle, all I have to really do here is just bring in the Dust Nor, and I do have the coverage with an Earthquake and also the Bulk to take any attack this thing wants to throw at me. So one more time, Buddy comes in, stands the hell up, takes that Stealth Rock, and uh, I just feel him up real quick. Just be sure, hey, nice Focus Sash you got there, Buddy. I'm going to go ahead and Earthquake you. So that is going to be the end of the game. I thought that was just a super kind of interesting dynamic there with the Oricorio, and good to show off what this set is kind of built to do. And so with that, that brings us into game number two. So what we have learned today is that Quackwaval danced so that Oricorio could fly. Or, I guess it would be the other way around because Oricorio is first. But regardless, we got ourselves another situation here where Buddy's working with a very scary team. However, I have a bird, so I'm not afraid. Important to note that we are going up against a spaceman this time, so that's kind of scary, and they are going to lead off with the Glamora. So, of course, as I just lead off with the dedicated Registeel, I'm just here to be a doorknob and just soak up damage and just set up some stealth rock. So, it's kind of a bad matchup with the... I guess it's kind of an even matchup here. They can have the coverage with the Earth Power, but again, I'm specially defensive and I don't really care, and then I can just Earthquake it back. 
And I don't really care that much about toxic spikes because I can again just go into drag algae. So we just go ahead and compare stealth rock sizes. Mine looking a little bit bigger as uh, at this point, I'm just gonna earthquake. I imagine this thing's probably focus sash and I don't really care what it wants to go for against me, but they're actually just gonna go ahead and end up switching out here right into the Samurott. So Samurott coming in here is not super ideal. And uh, this thing's kind of a threat. At least the good news about these Samurots is that it's just a little fella that you kind of know what he wants to do. And that is generally go for Ceaseless Edge and get up Spike. So it actually ends up going for the knockoff, which does do a good bit of damage. Also gets rid of my freaking Apple, which is annoying. But I can now just get up that Thunder Wave. And that's going to make this thing a whole lot easier to deal with just in terms of being faster. And we don't really know what item this is running. I also don't really know what the hell I want to do against this. And as I decide to go into the Dust Noir, I imagine it's basically just as a sack switch. I, a lot of this team that I'm working with requires kind of not taking a whole lot of unnecessary chip. And so sometimes you got to bring in Cyclopath to just take one for the team. I do at least get the intel of being able to get that Frisk off, which shows that it's just going to be heavy duty boots. And then the Ceaseless Edge just uh, is going to take care of me. Not only that, but also sets up the spikes. And while I do have Rapid Spin support with the Kamala on the team, it's not ideal to switch into this thing because it can't have, what, like, Sacred Sword. So I just decided to go into the Honchcrow here. I'm working with Honchcrow because this thing does not get enough love, mainly because it sucks. But I really like Honchcrow, and so I can at least outspeed since this thing is paralyzed. And Registeel is just doing the Lord's work, just spreading around Thunder Waves making my life a whole lot easier. So, a Brave Bird is not only able to take care, you know, of the uh, Samurott, but also gives me a nice little Moxie boost, and at plus one attack, we can actually be a bit of a problem here, and that's because Stab Sucker Punches. Doesn't matter how fast Honchkrow is, if you just have the, the well-played Sucker Punch. So as they decide to go into the Glamora, it does get uh, chip from that Stealth Rock, so no more Focus Sash potential. And I'm gonna go for a little Lollipop Sock. I go for the Sucker Punch, and that is going to take care of it with a crit. Not sure if it mattered at plus one, but it does at least kind of pop like a damn pinata, except the candy is instead toxic spikes, which is a little less delicious. But that actually gives me a second moxie boost. And honestly, Honchcrow is feeling in a pretty, feeling like I'm in a pretty damn good spot here. Because as they go into uh, the Iron Valiant, obviously it does resist a Sucker Punch. But it is actually going to go ahead and get that Quark Drive with the booster energy. It does reveal that it's going to be speed. And I don't really have a whole lot that wants to switch in here, kind of dependent on what it's working with. And I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna only, I'm gonna use this plus two, I'm gonna go for a Sucker Punch, and then I'm like, wait, that's four times, it, it, it does literally nothing. So, that was a bad idea, because now the guy freaking throws the moon at me, and uh, I should have probably just switched into Drag Algae. I just kind of figured that Honchkrow wasn't gonna be super uh, useful there, but... It turns out, yeah, I thought maybe he would like to predict and go for like a swords dance and then I would mirror, it, it, would, it, it didn't work out. Moral of the story, now I can go into Drag Algae, which at least has the benefit of coming in and now not worrying about taking in attack immediately. These things can just be mixed and th listen, they're scary, I don't know. I go for the Sludge Wave now because uh, obviously I have the coverage there. I know I can take an attack and the good thing about Iron Valiant switching out is that it can't come back in with... Um, with that booster energy. It kind of wastes that. And they are going to make the good switch bringing in the Golden Go here because obviously the Sludge Wave is coming and does not affect the Cinnamon is the Winamon ass dude. So I don't really have much that I can touch this with and I'm kind of in a bad spot versus the Golden Go. So I do want to switch that thing out. It's going to be a good check uh, to things like the Valiant. And I'm just going to go right into Doorknob. I Obviously I know that I can take Shadow Balls relatively nicely if it wants to uh, set up or something that's bad. It does actually end up going for the Nasty Plot and I'm like, well, okay, that's gonna be, that's gonna make things a little more interesting here. I feel like I can still at least live one attack because I am calm and max special defense. So as it goes for the Shadow Ball, it is going to uh, just throw right in my face and I do live with eight HP, which is clutch. However, I am dumb because I go for the Earthquake and I completely did not see that this thing was working with an air balloon. So I'm out here just blowing it, honestly. That Earthquake would have been extremely nice, but now as another Shadow Ball takes care of me, I am uh, now having to deal with a special attack boosted freaking golden go and I'm running out of options here. But I do still have the bird. And honestly, Oricario does a pretty good job at at least not allowing this thing to go for like a make it rain. And as I bring in the pom poms, I can actually know that I outspeed and I can go for a quiver dance. And what that's going to do is not only give me the special attack boost, but with that special defense boost, I'm thinking there's a pretty good chance that I can actually live a shadow ball. 
Or at least, that's kind of the plan. Moral of the story, Oricorio is just a little guy, and I imagine I can live one with plus one. So they do go for that Shadow Ball, and you guess that I'm able to live just barely, which is clutch as hell. Now, here's the problem. I cannot go for a Ground-type Revelation Dance because I, in fact, did not pop this thing's freaking air balloon. So I'm just going to go for a regular one, and my game completely glitches here. This is happening to me so often, where... The entire left side of my screen goes away for a little bit. It does actually end up knocking out the Golden Go with a crit. So not gonna lie, lucky as hell, but Orikorio, Orikorio, however the hell you wanna say it, is clutch as hell. So I do the the left side of the screen does come back eventually, and <laughs> they decide to bring in the King Gambit. So in this situation, I'm really feeling like King Gambit wants to sucker punch. Obviously, I'm at low health, and it kind of makes sense. So instead of attacking, I'm actually just gonna go for the roost here, and that's gonna get me some health back. But it also turns out they're just going to go for the Swords Dance. And what's actually kind of funny about the Swords Dance is obviously it's a dance move. And that does activate my Dancer. So I'm able to then just go for their own Swords Dance. Which makes zero difference uh, for my damage. But it's just kind of fun to steal their dance move anyway. And we do still at this point now have kind of a scary situation against the King Gambit. Because now a Sucker Punch feels like it probably kills. But we have the mind game of like them expecting me maybe to roost again. So I'm just going to go for the kind of obvious play here. I'm going to bust out the Terra Ground. And this thing does not have a freaking air balloon. So as I put the Earth on my head, now a ground type Revelation Dance should be enough to take care of this thing. And I'm just kind of hoping they do not Sucker Punch. So as I go for it, they do not Sucker Punch, which they probably just expected me to continue to roost and got a little bit greedy or just went for a Kowtow Cleave. Regardless, this thing can kowtow cleave in hell because it is, in fact, going to be dead. So, that takes care of the King Gambit. That's a pretty damn good win condition, you know, versus the Oricorio. And as the Iron Valiant comes in, I click a couple things to see if I can get the left side of the screen to come back, and it does. So, thank you, Game Freak, for making a game that doesn't break often. And I am going to be faster than the Valiant. So, it's important that this thing did not have its booster energy this time because at plus one speed, even the Oricorio is faster uh, than the Valiant, especially, I mean, Quiver Dance, we're at plus two. We're out here zooming. Moral of the story is our neck hurts because I have the friggin' Earth on it, but we still quick out here. So, the Valiant goes down in a Valiant fashion, and now Final Mine is actually going to be the Landris, which is kind of bad just because I don't have the ability to knock this thing out in one hit, but what I do have is some freaking willpower. I can go for an Air Slash, try to roll for a potential flinch, and it uh, does a whole bunch of damage, but does not flinch it, but the good news is it's actually going to be a special attacking Landorus, which allows us to live in Earth Power, which is amazing. And now one more uh, Air Slash is going to be able to do it. They're just going to head out to save the life of their their floating Landorus guy. And that is going to do it for that one. Honestly, kind of just a ridiculous match, but I thought it was a fun one. And with that, I do have one more bonus game, and that's going to bring us into match number three. The team previews are always hilarious because I just have like a ragtag group of randos versus... Some extremely scary threats as always, but again, we have the bird, let's jump into it. Alright, so this time they're going to go ahead and do a little spin -a -roo. out comes the Ogre Pond. Kind of an interesting lead, and you already know that Doorknob is just ready for anything. So, I kind of figure, I can take attacks on this thing, no problem, I do want to prioritize Stealth Rock, you basically know the drill. And I am just going to set up the Stealth Rock there. Turns out, however, this thing is working with the Low Kick, kind of forget that that is coverage. Right, on Ogre Ponds, and since my heavy ass falls over real hard, that does a lot of damage. So, I uh, am kind of in a bad spot there, I do at least, however, get up my Stealth Rock. And Doorknob with 75% uh, of my health gone is not a great start, especially just because I'm super slow anyway. So, I figure they probably just go for the low kick here, and that allows me at least an opportunity to bring in the Dust Snore. You can just kick right through me, and Cyclopath is just ready, ready to party out here. So, I come in. And I'm just going to feel up. Obviously, I know that this thing's holding the Wellsprings map. There's only one thing this thing can freaking have. So, shout out to Frisk for most of the time being extremely valuable. <laughs> but they actually end up going for the U-turn. They make the nice play, predicting me probably to go in the Ghost type, uh, you know, with the Dust Clops. Not the Clop. The Dust Noir there. And that allows them to now switch into the Great Tusk. The Tusk be looking pretty average, if you ask me. Except at this point, most people probably expect the Dust Noir to be more of a support set. I am instead working with the Choice Band. So I'm like, you know what? I would love some chip on the Tusk. This thing is annoying to take care of if it has a lot of health. So as they actually end up just setting up the Stealth Rock, I can go for a nice little Ice Punch, hit him with a little Wind Up, and it's not going to do a whole lot of damage, which shows this thing is probably more defensive rather than offensive. And it also does have the Leftovers, which 
is annoying. But I again, I just kind of want to prioritize the chip here. So I'm just going to stay in and go for another Ice Punch. I know that I can take attacks from this thing all day, as it does actually just have the knockoff. does get rid of my Choice Band, which is mostly just annoying because now yeah, Ice Punch isn't going to do as much. But I do get it below half, which feels pretty good because honestly, now this thing's in range easily for an Air Slash from Orikoyu to kill, even without uh, some dances set up. So I consider switching out here, but then I realize my slow ass is not going to have any value in the back. So I decided to stay in and Earthquake does take care of me. But I did do one thing, at least with the, the Dusk Noir, and that is get some chip on the Tusk here. And now even with that leftover recovery, it is still going to be you know at least around half. And sometimes that's all you need because I decided to just go right into the Orikoryo here. And of course, I would love to try to set up in this thing's face, but I just do not really know what this thing wants to be working with. An ice spinner would kind of be bad news. So I just decided to go for the air slash. I do connect, and that chip was important because that does take care of the tusk. So the problem with Snoopy's bird is that unless you have a quiver dance set up, it is far less scary. But as they decide to go into the Moltres here, Galarian Moltres, I kind of know what these things are working with, and it's probably going to want to try to set up in my face. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and match that with a Quiver Dance. And of course, I am going to be faster. I get my Quiver Dance up first, which is important because I'm actually able to get that special defense boost. And here's a fun fact. This Orikoryo is a little bit different than the previous ones. This is actually going to be working with max HP and um, max speed. So as they go for the agility, I'm thinking I'm actually probably still faster, and that's going to allow me to go for the Revelation Dance. And kind of thought that was going to be able to kill, but it, the freaking lack of special attack allows this thing to live, which is quite bad. But as you're going to see here, it actually activates the weakness policy, which now gives this thing a freaking boost, and then also gives it Berserk, which is quite scary. But as they now go for the Fiery Wrath, the HP investment comes in clutch because I'm barely able to live. So kind of a freaking whirlwind of a turn there, but luckily it ended up working out regardless. And at this point, I can just go for one more Revelation Dance, and that is going to take care of it. So, this is actually one of the first matches I had using this set. I was kind of just testing out what wants to work with the Oricorio. And as you're going to see, actually, it, it, it's a bit different. So, they decide now to bring in the Coma O. And obviously, Coma O has the potential to go for a Terra here. I'm really worried about them tearing out of uh, super effective damage from an air slash, but then I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna air slash it anyway, and it actually just barely ends up living. Literally lives it with one HP, but does get the flinch. So extremely lucky on my end, and down goes the Como, which is one of the biggest damn threats, and a revelation dance, just give him the, the old cheer, and that is gonna take care of it. So, again, the difference with this Oricorio is this is actually before I realized that revelation dance, in fact, takes the type of your Terra, and, uh, I do have Terra Blast over Roost on this set because I am dumb, but as they go into the Armor Rouge here, I'm like, ooh, nice, I can go for my Terra Ground, and at plus one special attack, it does not matter if I click Terra Blast or just the Revelation Dance, even though Revelation Dance is going to be stronger. I put the Earth on my head once again. Honestly, MVP of the game is the freaking Ground Terra. Nobody, nobody sees the Ground-type bird coming at him, and a Terra Blast is going to be enough. They do not go for a defensive Terra of their own. And uh, that is going to take care of Armor Rouge. If it was Focus Ash, it is now dead because of the Stealth Rock. And uh, that takes care of it. Literally, nobody puts respect on Oricario's damn name out here. And as they go into Ogre Pond, they now have two Pokemon left. And uh, listen, Ogre Pond does not want to deal with the bird. They actually just end up running. Because people be running from the Oricorio. Thing is a threat. And that is going to do it. So thank you guys very much for watching. It has been fun to mess around with the bird. I might try out some other types of Oricorio, potentially. Let me know what you guys would like to see next, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.